In the square, Mark Yates plays on and goals. Let's have a look at Ablett on the run. One bounce, then another. And from 50 metres on the run, a great goal. For St Kilda, down at Cadinia Park, Nicky Winmar. Now three from the Cats. First up, Andrew Buse. The state defender kicks truly. Gary Ablett. Number one from Gary Ablett. This is number two. Out of the centre, and away he goes. A couple of bounces, and bang, from 50 metres, straight through the middle. And it was almost a lot. tie both his kicks, but this one here, he just knows exactly where the goals are. That's, I suppose he's got a wrong foot, but if he does have a thing, it's his left one. That was a magnificent goal. Gary Abbott. The ball away from the centre, and this fellow here, Winmar, is an absolute delight to go and watch play football, and his cooperation together with Lockett is excellent. This is Nathan Burke going in, and Burke did well early, but unfortunately Winmar uh, got hurt, or he seems to be carrying a bit of an injury. You can see here that St Kilda are playing very well early in the match. Mm. And Winmar going again, and uh, I don't know whether Geelong perhaps was a little bit loose in that stage, but uh, I think there were 12 goals scored in the first quarter, and in the second quarter there were another uh, 12 goals scored. So it was a high-scoring game, and both sides doing doing the very pleasant things of football, let's put it that way. L Lindner, did he get a, uh, an opportunity? Well, and how did a, he go there was a change in the game plan yesterday, obviously, from Malcolm Blight, who decided that the 15 or 16 or 20 minute mark of each quarter, that Burke, despite how well he was playing, would go off, that Stone would go into the ruck, that Brownless would go center forward, that Ablett would move up one n notch on the, on, the, on the ground somewhere, and Lindner would get a run. Where, in what position? Well, he played uh, half forward flank. And how did he pocket. go? He, he, did, he did a few nice things, but uh, may not be sufficient to keep him in the team uh, consistently. He may be used in that role, but it, it certainly was yesterday quite a, uh, quite a change to see uh, Burke, who was actually the driving force of the team in the first part of the quarter. Bob, you said off air that Gary Ablett was the best champion and also the worst champion you'd ever seen. Could you clarify that? Well, I think that possibly, when I said he, that possibly, when I said he, at training is the best champion I've ever seen. He, there isn't anything that he can't do until he can run faster, he can mark high, he can kick better, anything he can spin out of pack, he can do anything. And he does it in the games for a good portion of the games, but there are times when he does let himself down, you know, and I, and, and really, I've had, I've had football heroes from Bob Pratt to Teddy Whitten to Polly Farmer and Dennis Marshall and to Wade and all my own fellas. But Ablett really, as far as skill, absolute genius of skill goes. He, 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 he shattered. Out of all those players, who would you put in the team first? Uh, I might have to put, uh, well, well AJ Whitten. Would you put, where would you put uh, Ron Ablett? And listen, Ron. Well, put, uh, oh, where would I put him? I'd yeah. have him in the team, Ron. Ron has to give I'd have him in the team. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, having but you never are. St Kilda, uh, St Kilda did <laughs> quite well. well. I gave one vote to Ablett, who his statistics are remarkable if, if you take a, a study of them. Who to Besto, who is a great player, and Buse, who has returned to magnificent form and relishes running around the ground. There's no two ways about well, that.